Go to Psalm 111. Psalm 111 tonight. Psalm 111, verse 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. I want to draw your attention to verse three and four. And, um, you know, it says um, his work is honorable and, and glorious. Um, verse four, it says he hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. You know, um, God wanted his works to be remembered. Uh, man, there's. Uh, all sorts of verses. Psalm 105, remember his marvelous works, which he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. In the book of Deuteronomy, uh, at least seven times you find the Lord mentioning something in one way or another. And it says, you know, forget not this and don't forget this and don't forget that. And of course, uh, Moses was addressing the children of Israel as they were going into the promised land. And um, and he said, remember the things that your eyes have seen. And he was always encouraging them to remember. Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We are quick to forget. And one of the things that God did, at least for the children of Israel, was he instituted days of remembrance. Um, in Exodus 13, you know, he, he, he sets up the Passover and he says to them, Remember this day and still to this very day, um, the Orthodox Jews, at least, they still celebrate the Passover and they still remember that day. In Exodus 20, um, Moses, uh, God spoke to the children of Israel through Moses in the Ten Commandments. And he said, remember the Sabbath day. Remember. Look at Exodus 16 for a moment. Exodus 16. Exodus 16, verse 32. And in this chapter, the Lord has just begun to give them manna from heaven. In verse 32, it says, And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth. From the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. So the Lord tells him here to, to take a a basket and to to put some manna in it. Now the manna was something that normally would not keep, and it wouldn't keep past the, the the morning it was given. But the Lord told Moses, He said, "I want you to take a basket and fill it full of manna." And He said, "This particular basket will keep throughout their generations." And He said, "I want them to see this bread." You know, there would come a day when when you know manna wouldn't drop out of the sky anymore. But he said, but I want them to see this. Look at number 16. So there was a basket of manna so that they would never forget. Uh, they could see with their eyes and remember what God had done for them. 
uh, number 17, number 17. In number 16, you have Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and that, that big rebellion against Moses. And the Lord opened the earth and swallowed a bunch of them up there in, in Numbers chapter 16. And in Numbers chapter 17, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods, Write thou every man's name upon his rod, and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece. For each prince one, according to their father's houses, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded. And brought forth buds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. And Moses brought all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. And uh, so that 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 little stick, that almond stick that was taken for Aaron's rod, it was to be kept for a token. Uh, and they, he brought that, they brought those rods out and they were just all dead twigs except for, uh, except for Aaron's rod. And Aaron's rod had blossoms and almonds and, and it was just amazing to look at. And the Lord said, I want this kept forever. I want a visible uh, reminder to them of what just happened and, and of what I did that the Lord said. Look at Numbers 15. Numbers 15. Split back a page or two. Numbers 15. The Lord was really big on visual reminders. Numbers 15, verse 38. Numbers 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go whoring, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. You know, it's sort of like what most of us do in our houses. Now, we don't, uh, maybe a lot of us don't have these kind of reminders, and, and maybe maybe we really should. Now, the Lord, the Lord didn't necessarily tell us to do that, but he sure made a big deal out of it with Israel. And um, uh, But you know, in our houses, I, I think most of you, uh, you've got pictures on the wall. Uh, you've got... You know, uh, those of you that are married, you've got a wedding picture. You know, you, you've got some photo albums around, um, and and you've got you've got some things in your house. Maybe a a gift that somebody gave you. Uh, you know, a, a, um, something that was your grandfather's. You know, and you've got it up on the dresser. And and um, you know what a lot of those things are? They're reminders. And you look at those, and a lot of those trigger a memory. And they bring you back to something that normally you would never think of. You know, I got a day timer at home and for years I've kept a day timer. And um, I, uh, it's not real detailed. You know, it's, it's really not like a diary. The odd time I'll write something on one of the pages. But I have the monthly calendars and I have key events and, and all sorts of things written on those little monthly calendars. Man, I can pull those things out and I can open them up. And, you know, I can look back, you know, 2017 and I'll see something I've got written there. And it's something I would never think of. But, man, I see that and like, oh, yeah, 
you know, that's, that's when, you know, so-and-so came over and we did this and, and, and suddenly you remember just that, that visual reminder. Um, look at um, Exodus 17, Exodus 17. Exodus 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. So they have this great, this great battle and they win. And the Lord tells Moses, write this for a memorial. He said, write down the details, write everything you can remember, write it down. And he said, every once in a while, he said, I want you to get this book out and I want you to rehearse this in the ears of Joshua. I want you to help Joshua relive this event. Look at Joshua chapter four. Joshua comes to Jordan and uh, uh, they're getting ready to go in and take Jericho and, and of course the water parts for them and the Jordan is at flood tide. The water parts and they go across. In chapter four, it says, and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua saying, take you 12 men out of the people, out of every tribe a man and command ye them saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood form, firm, twelve stones. And ye shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. And take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off from before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial and to the children of Israel forever. God was really big on physical and visual memorials. And, you know, man hasn't changed. Uh, you know, it's, it's probably because we are so forgetful in general. You know, we, we I think most of us, we tend to live uh, in, in, in the moment in the sense that you know, we're, we're caught up in what's happening right now. 
you know, we, we really don't think much about what happened six months ago or what's coming six months down the road, really. We're, we're really, you know, we're living where we're at right now. And um, the Lord told those Jews, he said, I want you to set some things up that whenever they see them, it will trigger a memory. And, and in these cases, it was always a good memory. It was always a powerful memory of something big that the Lord had done for them. And he said, I, I want it to be there. And he said, when you're, he said, I want it there for your kids. So when your kids ask, you'll get a chance to tell them. You know, fallen nature is twisted and tainted, and it's totally upside down ever since man fell in the garden. Can you imagine being Adam in the garden? You know, we, we talk about this, and I, I can't even fathom this. But, you know, it's a perfect place, like just absolutely perfect. And all man had to do was, was to uh, tend the garden in some way. And I, I don't really know. God doesn't tell us what that entailed for Adam. There was, there was no, uh, uh, you know, no curse on the ground. There would have been no weeds in the garden. Uh, it was just absolutely perfect. And uh, God one day brings all the animals to Adam. And this is interesting. It doesn't say that God told Adam what to call them. It says God brought them to see what he would call them. Now, isn't that something? Can you imagine? We were at somebody's house the other day, and um, they have a dog kennel. And there, there must have been, I don't know, 20 or 25 dogs in there. And they're all the same breed, so they're all the same color. And uh, this dog breeder, he knows them all by name. And, and the comment that was made as, as we left was, how in the world would you, would you even tell all those things apart? And that's just 15 or 20. Can you imagine being Adam and being able to name all the animals? And remember, I, I played the matching game with Raina the other day in my living room. How many of you know what the matching game is? Raise your hand. Yeah, you got those little cards and, and you flip them all face down. And there's, you know two hippos and two rhinoceroses and two frogs and two of this and two of that. And it's all mixed up. And uh, the name of the game, of course, is you flip them and you got to remember where they are. And, you know, I'm doing fine until about I flip the fourth set. And it's like, man, I, I don't even remember where the first set is now. Can you imagine being Adam? Adam named all those animals. And he remembered the names. That, that does tell you, we, man, man has not evolved in a positive way. That was in the garden. That would have been a, a pleasant thing. There was no negativity connected with that memory. Here comes the elephant. Why, 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 what possessed Adam to call that thing an elephant? We will never know. But, but Adam looked at that and that was a good memory. Maybe there's something about that that made him laugh. But there was there was no there was nothing negative about that, and and he could remember it. He'd always remember it. But man, something happened in the garden, and everything got turned upside down. And we remember what we ought to forget. We remember every hurt, every slight, every insult, every harsh word every act of unfairness, every instance of neglect, every loss, every broken promise, every betrayal. We don't have a bit of trouble remembering that. I mean, if we had a matching game with all your hurts on it, we put them down there, you'd, you'd probably win the game. That's the way our minds, that's the way our minds are. We remember all that. And, and somebody said long ago, and this makes sense. Think about it. When an event connects to an emotion, it is not usually forgotten. When an event connects to an emotion, you know, that's why, you know, you remember, you know, those of you that are married, you remember your wedding day. Uh, that was an emotional day, but it was a great day. It was a big day. Um, you know, when an event connects to an emotion, positive or negative, um, you, you tend to remember that. 
You know, we are to forget those things which are behind. But instead, we tend to let, we tend, we tend to let what is behind haunt us. It seems that what is in the past is always handy and it's just a whisper away. It's always being brought to remembrance and we don't even have to work at this. Doesn't drive you crazy. The good things you try to remember and you got to work at it. How many of you in this past year have tried to memorize some scripture in the past since January? Raise your hand. This is not a guilt trip. I'm not going to fuss at anybody. Raise it up high. Okay. All right. How many of you have found it difficult to remember some of those passages that you memorized in the last six months? Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to remember something. That, that's the most wonderful stuff you can ever get in your head. And you and you read it, and you go over it, and you read it, and you go over it, and you say it out loud, and you do it. And, and you know what? You, you got it for a few days unless you go for a few weeks and you don't review it. Now, they say, they say, what you memorize before the age of 12, you never forget. I, I think that's pretty true. But man, after that, we don't, we don't have to work at remembering anything negative. It just happens effortlessly. It is natural. It is the natural man. And the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man. We remember what we ought to forget, and we forget, we forget, and I'm speaking for myself, we forget what we ought to remember. What should we remember? Oh, man, we should remember the multitude of our blessings, the multitude of his mercies. Many, O oh Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we if we regularly remembered every answered prayer and every deliverance from a difficult situation and every time the Lord forgave us and every time he specifically guided us and every time he waited for us and every time he sent someone to us wouldn't it be amazing if we woke up in the morning and we're laying there in bed and before we before we focused on our crazy hair and our aches and pains if we would suddenly remember the select favor of our lot in life i mean you're laying there in bed and all of a sudden you're rejoicing in the land of your birth and you're rejoicing in the health that you have and you're rejoicing in the freedom that you enjoy, and you're rejoicing in the exposure to the gospel that God brought our way, what a way to start the day! And then follow it with a cup of coffee. What a way to start the day! Man, the devil in that hymn book. You know what we ought to remember? We ought to remember the destiny that would have been ours had not God moved in our life. You ever think of where you'd be? You ought to think about that. Where would you be tonight? Where would you be? For some, Where would you be had not, some of you, where would you be had not God moved in your parents' life? Where would you be? We forget the price of our forgiveness. We forget how much he forgave. A man of long ago wrote this. He said, when this passing world is done, when has sunk yon glowing sun? When we stand with Christ in glory, looking over life's finished story, then, Lord, shall I fully know, and not till then, how much I owe. When I hear the wicked call on the rocks and hills to fall, when I see them fear and shrink on that fiery hellish brink, then, Lord, shall I fully know 
and not till then how much I owe. When I stand before the throne, dressed in beauty, not my own. When I see thee as thou art and love thee with unsinning heart, then, Lord, shall I fully know, and not till then, how much I owe. Man, there's a lot of good things to remember. There's a lot. And you know what the Lord had those Jews do? He had them put up visual reminders. Visual reminders. Now, I know what some of you do, and we do it too. And you, you'll have verses up around your house, and that's actually scriptural. That's Deuteronomy 6. But, you know, sometimes you get to where you just... Um, you get oblivious to things and, um, and you know, you see it, but you don't see it anymore. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we ought to do. I don't know what, what God's going to have you do. I don't know, but, but he hath made his marvelous works to be remembered. That's what it says in Psalm 111. And you know, I, that's, that's one of the benefits of, of reading this every day is um, suddenly you're reminded of some things that we wouldn't normally think of. Look at Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verse 1. The word extol, E-X-T-O-L, means to praise highly. It means, it means more than praise. It means take it to a new level. Okay? Verse 1. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. You know, we're, we're going to do that someday. Someday we're going to be on the other side. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to abundantly utter the memory. The memory! What memories? What memories? The memory of his great goodness. And you know what? It might bring heaven down to earth more if we would abundantly utter the memory of his great goodness. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for your truth. And uh, Lord, truly all of us, Lord, you have showered our lives with goodness. Lord, you've intervened. You've helped us. You've, you've taken care of us. You've guided us. Lord, certainly you have kept us from what we could have been. And uh, Lord, we, we don't even begin to understand all the good things you've done. Lord, would you help us that we would somehow call to memory those great things that you have done. And Lord, the things you're doing day by day and the effects of your mercy day by day. Lord, help us. You caused your people to put up visual reminders. Now, Lord, I don't know exactly what that means for us, but Lord, no doubt there are things that we can do to remind ourselves every day of your great goodness. And Lord, would you help us that somehow, Lord, we would begin to do that for your glory in Jesus name with your heads bowed and your eyes closed I want to give you just a minute to talk to the Lord
Lord, help us to remember your marvelous works in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.